in entirety is temporary. The entire life is very, very temporary. Even when you have the grace to live up to 90, 90 years will soon come just like it is yesterday. When people are celebrating their 50th birthday, their 40th birthday, they wonder, I'm 40 just like that. I'm 50 just like that. That's how somebody is going to be 70 and said, I, I don't understand. It looks as if it is not me that they are talking about. Life is temporary and it is flying. It is flying at a very high speed. So much more that if care is not taken, one will not see it until it has flew away. Glory to God. Now, I titled this particular message, Building the Success Cast Building the Success Cast And So this is the part one of it. Cast are built by men, not by angels. Cast are built by men, not by angels. But cast are not built by just anyone by accident. They are not built by accident. A castle is a group of buildings, or a group of, a group of buildings, or a large building that is fortified, fortified against attack, fortified with thick walls and battlements and towers. A castle is a house with splendor, deliberately built to display affluence. They are the stronghold of the rich men, the nobles in the, in the Middle Ages. Now, there are castles built with bricks and irons. But the castles of today and the castles of tomorrow are castles of success. Castles that are built with brick and irons will soon become obsolete. Because generation after generation, we improve on the things that on ground. But when you build a castle of success, you have really built a legacy. Hallelujah. Brethren, success and failure are not by accident. They do not occur by accident. Someone will not have been successful and they will ask him, how did you arrive here? And say, I don't know. I don't find myself in success. Likewise, people that have failed in life whether they want to admit it or not, they have gotten what they deserve to get. The Lord will help us to succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua 1, 8. said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. There are laws and principles. The whole universe, the whole world run on principles. And so there are also laws and principles that, that guide success, that make success happen. And that is why we are here. So when somebody is settled with Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he becomes a kind of person that can build the castle of success in life. When you are settled with Joshua 1 8, you become the kind of a person that can build the castle of success. It's not what does anybody can build by accident. Failure, on the other hand, will surely happen when somebody is disconnected with the principles of success in life, either knowingly or unknowingly. Unfortunately, a lot of people are disconnected from the principles of success and they are not aware of it. And so they they continue to be alarmed at the rate of failure that is visiting them. They are wondering why I see that I can't succeed at anything. Why is everything failing my hands? There is a disconnection between the individual and the principles of success. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Anyone who is disconnected will surely, it's a sure thing, will surely fail. It does not matter how many hours he or she pray per day. Because success does not happen on the altar of prayer alone. Success happens by application of principles of success back up with God in prayers. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, Matthew 16, 25, the Bible says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. 
So we all are lost in Adam. In Genesis chapter 3. We are all lost in Adam when our great forefather Abraham sinned. And so the seed that he, that he carried were corrupted. And so we are alienated from God and from his mandates. But thankfully Jesus Christ came that we might discover ourselves through salvation. Every man that is not saved, that is not born again, is lost already into the dungeon of failure. Even when he looks as if he's achieving things, in the sight of God, that is not achievement, that is not success. Because success, where in the soul is going to be lost at the end of the day, is not success. Glory be to God. Success, where in the soul of the individual is going to be lost in hell, that's not success. Success is determined. When you have achieved here on earth and you still make it to heaven, praise the Lord. So, in redemption, we are given the opportunity to find the way again in order to rediscover ourselves. I said earlier on, until you are settled down with Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, you cannot find yourself. You cannot discover who you are. You cannot become the kind of person that can succeed, that can build the castle of success that we are talking about. So, in redemption, we have the privilege, we have the right, we have the opportunity to find ourselves again as Christ mirrors who we are to us by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, since castles are not built by themselves, it is only men that have found themselves in God that can build the castle of success. The kind of success that God will say, this is success, and God will stamp it. You know, in professions in this world, when you have prepared your work, you have to stamp it with the stamp wherein you are licensed as a professional. If you are not a current member, current is the professional body for engineers. There are certain things you cannot do that you cannot do, sorry. If you do it, they will tell you that you are not authorized to do it. You need a certified engineer to stamp that this structure is well done. When they prepare books, books for organizations, you need a certified chartered accountant to stamp it that this is authentic. The same thing in the, school, in the field of medicine. A medical doctor, qualified licensed medical doctor is the one who can say this is what happened to this person. It takes a doctor to certify somebody dead. Even when everybody sees that this person is dead, doctor has to certify that he's dead. Everybody saw that this guy is dead already. But they will still take him to hospital for a doctor to certify that. He, otherwise, there will be no death certificate. The same thing happens, brethren, in life success. Until the Almighty God, who is the supreme authority, endorse and stamp that you have succeeded, you have not succeeded. So, success by just any how means is not success in the sight of God. That is why the Bible qualifies you will have good success in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Praise the Lord. So, somebody says, Not till we are lost. Not not till we are lost. In other words, not we have lost the world, shall we begin to find ourselves. Until you have lost the world, or you have stepped out of the world, until you are lost to the, to the things of the world, you cannot find yourself. And until you have found yourself, you cannot build a castle of success that will receive endorsement of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So who is ready to build the castle? Who is ready to build the castle of success in this world? He that is willing to hug the future and turn his back on his past, the past of failure and the past of disappointment. Until you are ready to hug the future, turn your back on the, on the past failures of life, you might never build a castle of success in life. Who is ready to build the castle? He that is willing to take painful decisions today that are painful to the flesh, but beneficial to the soul. Painful to the flesh, but beneficial to your destiny. Those are the men that are willing and ready to build a castle. Glory be to God. Some decisions that we are going to take from now are going to be opposite to those that have taken in the past that brought stagnation and retrogression to your life. Castle builders. They are men who look forward to what should be done and they get things done by taking right decisions at the right time. Who is ready to build the castle? He that is willing to embrace new values, new set of values that are found in castle builders. 
Someone says, if you check all great men, you are going to see some common factors in them. Whether it's great in the, in the field of military, as a military officer, or as an academia in the university, or great in professional line of life, or great in business. Gather all of them that are great in all kinds of life, examine them carefully, you will see certain common factors in them. Until you are ready to embrace such values, you are not ready to build a castle of success in this world. Now, therefore, somebody may ask me, what are the attributes of castle builders? I'm not talking about physical castles that are built with bricks and iron. I'm talking about castles of success that make life worth living and that make generations to thank God for your own life. Glory be to God. What are those attributes? Now, building the castle of success requires that the builder should understand who he or she is. So the first question that each one of us need to ask him ourselves is, who exactly am I? Who exactly am I? And your answer is not going to be that you mention your name, that my name is Andrew, or my name is uh, Tunde, or my name is Smith. That is not the answer. The answer is that I am one created in the image of God and his likeness. On purpose, to achieve God's mandate for my life, that is who I am. I am a prince and a princess in the least. I am actually a king as far as God is concerned. That is where I am. Glory be to God. I arrived in this world on purpose. God knew that I was coming and he set an agenda for me. Until you, are, you have discovered who you are, ask yourself exactly who are you. The fact that you live in Australia, you live in London, you live in Nigeria, you live in Ghana, you live wherever you are living, does not make you just a common person. We have been told that there is no two of you in the entire world. No one has exact, your exact thumbprint in the whole world. You are unique in your own sense. Who exactly am I? Glory to God. And then, what do you intend to build? What's your destination? Where are you going? When those two questions are correctly answered, then you are on your way to discover the things that you need to carry in your traveling bag building your castle. You can build a hut, H-U-H, H-U-T. You can build a hut just by playing around. You can build a hut just by playing around. You can never build a castle until your entire being is involved in it. Your spirit, your soul, your body is involved in it. That is when you can build a castle. So what then are those things that we need to carry in us, in order for us to succeed greatly in life and become a castle builder. Number one is effective personal time management. I choose time management about so many other things because the moment a child is born, even before he realizes who he or she is, even before he opens eyes to recognize anyone, his lifetime has commenced. The moment a child is born, the same minute that he's born, as soon as the mother push out and the baby is here, time begins to tick for him or her. Life has started. Even when he has not opened his eye to recognize anybody, the life we are talking about has started. So time, to me, becomes the most important or the paramount factor that we must recognize in the equation of success in life. And we are talking about maximized living, which means living to get the best out of life, living to achieve the optimum, living to arrive at the peak or the summit of our mountains, living to become all that God intended for you to become. And when that has to be done, the effective personal time management is very much important. We are made to understand the importance of time when King Solomon wrote, to everything there is a time and a season, Ecclesiastes chapter, one and verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 1, to everything, not just few things, not majority of the things, to everything there is time and there is a season to every purpose. So that tells us straight away that there is not anybody can build without effective use of time and management of the same. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
the word time is taken from an Hebrew word, ETH, et. And the word season is taken from another Hebrew word called Zaman. And both of them actually means appointment. Sure appointment. Or getting things done in the right season, in the right frame of time. That is what time is. Hallelujah. And so, whoever therefore that will build a castle of success must be the fellow that makes the best use of his time in life. The best use, the very best use of, the, of his time. When you have made the very best use of your time in life, then you are becoming listed among those who have succeeded in life. Anyone, therefore, who do not recognize the importance of time and its usage in life, we never smell what they call success in this world. Never smell what they call success in this world. Hallelujah. The poorest man on earth is not the man without money in his account or in his pocket. The poorest man in this world is the fellow who would not place the right value on time. He will remain poor. Irrespective of his religious leaning and where he or she is living. Time is an equal treasure or raw material dispensed by God to every mother. Every human being living in this world have time. Given in same quality and volume to every man. Someone who wake up in Australia this morning and the fellow who wake up in the jungle of Amazon in Brazil or somebody who wake up in Lagos, Nigeria, no one among them have more than 24 hours per day. We all have equal, equal volume and quality of this great resource given to us by God. Therefore, the major difference between the poor and the rich between the successful and the failure is the usage of time and understanding of his management. That's the major, major difference. It's not about certificate in school. Somebody may end the same certificate with you and it's nowhere to be found in the radar of success in life. Because immediately after he finished school, he had forgotten that time is running and he began to live a riotous life. And both of you are aging per day. As the day is clocking, you are aging together. But the level of achievement is going to be different from one person to another based on the usage of time. I pray nothing will waste your time and nothing will waste your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can I again hear your amen? amen. When you pray for harvest, I reason that what God gives to you is seed of time to go and produce your harvest by yourself. You pray for harvest, God says, I've had. I give you seed. Go and go and make the harvest by yourself. After all, God will not give a man and his wife a baby from heaven. He gives them the seed to produce babies. You produce the baby, you have a child. You don't produce the baby, fine. You are good to go. After all, people married, and they made all their mind, we are not going to have children until the first two years of the marriage. And there is no miracle anybody can do if the two of them will not settle down to produce baby. There is nothing they can do about it. Why? God has given them the seed for baby production. Until they are willing and ready to produce a baby, no, no miracle can happen in that house that will bring a baby there. So God give us seed of time to produce our harvest, to produce our success, to produce our greatness and effectiveness in life, and majority of the people do not recognize what they have in their hands. They are looking for things that are inferior to time, and they are saying, I don't have what it takes to succeed. Glory to God. May the Lord open our understanding up in the name of Jesus Christ. Time cannot be frozen. Time cannot be banked. You cannot take time to bank and say, I want to bank it for future use. Time cannot be borrowed and say, okay, I don't have enough time. Borrow me two minutes or 20 minutes for your time. You can only spend it as it comes. The time that you have dedicated to attend the MLS, for example, cannot be replicated to do any other thing. You can only spend the time as it comes. Time. It's like money, but it carries an expiry date on, it, on it, itself. As time is coming, it carries its own expiry date. If you don't spend it now, it expires. The last one hour is gone, you cannot bring it back again. And that is why we must be instant in recognizing this great treasure that we have that is called the time. The greatest currency in the world is not the US dollars, it's not the British pounds, it's not the the Israeli uh, she, uh, shekel. It is not the Nigerian Naira. The greatest currency in life is the currency of time. 
the greatest currency in life in this world is the currency of time and it is a universal raw material there is nothing anybody can ever achieve in this world without the use of time even when you want to sleep you you spend time to sleep you want to eat you spend time to eat you want to do anything you spend time to do it and so the best use of time that anybody can engage will determine how far he goes in life time has no geographical boundary Nobody elsewhere have more than 24 hours than any other person. No geographical boundary to time. The Bible in John chapter 5 verse 17 says, But Jesus answered them, John 5 17, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. And so, how many hours of your day do you put into productive use? How many hours of your day do you waste on things that do not connect where you are going in life? In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 2, Proverbs 22, 2, Bible says, The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The rich and the poor, they meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The devil has not produced a human being in history. Every human being that you see rich and poor are all made by the most high God. But each person chose the class he wants to belong by his understanding and management of time. A set of twins could be born the same day, given the same treatment by the same parent, and their life will be wide different in terms of success and failure in life, based on their understanding and what they put their time into. Hallelujah. Of all the values and skills that human beings must develop in order for them to build castles of success in life, time is very important. The fabric with which life is made is called the time. Just like the garment that you are wearing is made of cotton in inches together. Now, when you waste one inch after the other, you can end up wasting a whole 10 yards of cloth, inch by inch like that. That inch is your seconds. That inch is your minute. That inch is your hour. When you keep on wasting one second after the other, you will soon waste a whole one minute. You keep on wasting one minute after the other, you soon waste a whole hour. You keep on wasting one hour after the other, you soon waste a whole day. You keep wasting day after day, you soon waste a whole week. You soon waste a whole month. You soon waste a whole year. The person may soon waste a whole lifetime if care is not taken. I pray that the Almighty God will put it in our hands today to effectively manage our time and progress in life in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear your amen? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. Ephesians 5 16 says, Redeem me the time because the days are evil. The days are evil. It means you don't know what is coming tomorrow. So the time that you have on hand today, why don't you make the best use of it? If you check the Bible again in Genesis chapter 6, between chapter 6 and chapter 8, we have God brought flood upon the earth and what other he has created. He commissioned Noah to build an ark that is going to save him and his family. Check again. God did not tell Noah when exactly the flood is going to come. He didn't tell him. He only told him what to do. Noah could have begun to sleep and say, I will build it. I will do it. I will start tomorrow. I will start next week. God will have waited and waited. And because nobody can hold God to ransom, the flood will have come and meet, and meet Noah and kill him with other people, irrespective of the promise that God has given to him. There are people that have received the promise of God, but they received the prophecy and they went to sleep, and waiting for the manifestation of the prophecy, doing nothing about it. I pray, every prophecy that comes your way from today, as you make the best use of your time, watching over those prophecies, they will come to pass. In the name of Jesus, shout another amen. Now, come under pressure in life, because some pressure time has been wasted in the past. They now come under intense pressure. Intense pressure. Children vacated. You know they are, they are going on vacation for three months or two months. They are resuming on so and so date. And you refuse to begin to pay attention to what will these children need when they are resuming. It is when it is 24 hours, 72 hours to resumption that you now begin to run around. There is no point for it. A lot of people are under pressure in the later part of their lifetime because they are wasting so much time in their youthful days. May you not waste your time in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your amen. amen. Listen, brethren, productive nations and productive people, they are not magicians. The only thing that they have been able to do 
is that they have put their time as a major resource for development, they have put it to use. Why poor nations and poor people are time wasters? Show me a nation and a people that remain poor for a long time. I will show you a people who did not do what they are supposed to do with their time when it matters most. There is always enough time to do anything if you understand what you are meant to do. If you know where you are going, if you know what is your mission and your vision, there is always enough time to do them. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy 4, verse 13, 1 Timothy 4, 13, the Bible says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Only three things. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrines. What does he mean? Those things that I mentioned in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, they are skill development equipment. They are things that will bring your understanding and knowledge up, that will shove you up in wisdom. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation. Exhortation is listening to what somebody who knows more than you is saying. And to doctrines. What are the principles? Doctrines are principles. What are the principles that govern the thing that you want to achieve in life? He said, give attendance to those three things. Bible didn't mention four things. Only three things. When those three things are well attended to, you are falling in line, moving forward to achieve the thing that, that God intended for you to achieve. Till I come. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. In effect, we are saying, deploy your time to sharpen your knowledge and skill first. And then the foundation of your cast too is being laid already. Deploy your time to sharpen your knowledge and your skills and the foundation of your castle of success is being laid already because there is no space for a fool in the hall of greatness. There is no place for, for someone who, who lack understanding in the hall of fame. I pray that the almighty God who has brought us into this we help us greatly from now in the name of Jesus Christ. We have taken our time, we have prayed, we have stood in the, in the presence of God, praying for ten times better grace. Now the work has started. No one gets ten times better without increasing the input. If your speed as a marathoner, as a sprinter before, is that you cover one, one kilometer in nine minutes and you want to get it done better, you need to sharpen yourself again. You need to practice more. You need to push yourself more. You need to do some things that will energize you in order for you to run faster than you have been running before. Ten times better is not just a slogan. Ten times better is not a mantra. Ten times better means I am ready to give it all that it takes in order for my life never to remain at the same level. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Planning requires time. I'm help us to save time. So Jesus in Luke 14, Luke 14 from verse 28 to 29 says, Who among you will build a tower that will not sit down for to count the cost? To count the cost means you need to plan. When you are planning, you are making the best use of your time so that you don't waste time at the end of the day. If somebody is traveling, for example, and he took time out to fuel the car, to get the tires, to check the radiator, make sure that there is water there, Check the battery that the battery is working. He has saved himself time that he will waste when the car breaks down on the road, when the tire goes flat on the road. The time that he's going to waste will be so much compared to the time that he spent in planning. When you take time to plan, you are saving time in the future. Majority of men don't know jack about planning. They live by the day. They just wake up before they start asking, what do I need to do tomorrow? You plan tomorrow, today, you plan next week, this week, you plan next month, this month, you plan next year, this year. If you wait until you enter into 2025 before you start planning 2025, you're already in trouble. I'm sorry using that word. I pray from now, God will put the pen in our hearts, not in our hand, to begin to plan our time in the name of Jesus Christ. I cannot hear your amen. amen. Finally, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, You little children are from God and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What that scripture is saying 
is that there may be distractions. There may be forces out there, spiritual or physical, that want to stop you. But you are already mightier than those forces because there is someone that is living on your inside. The only fellow that has no solution, the only fellow that is going to live at the mercy of the enemy, is the person who does not have the mighty one on his inside. Who is the mighty one? The almighty God himself. We, who comes into you when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you live by his principles. For as long as this is done and you can master your time and you can sharpen your vision, the devil lost the battle. The devil lost the battle. And I'm standing on the authority of God for this morning that as many that we connect today to the principle of God, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, mastering your time and believing in God through Jesus Christ, you will surely build your castle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we rise on our feet? Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet. Give me to God. Please give your hand to Jesus if you are clapping for him. Give your hand to him. Give your hand to him. Give your hand to him. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Now, please lift up your voice to God now and say, Father, I can't hear you. Say, Father, I receive wisdom for time management and for life management in the name of Jesus. I receive wisdom for time and life management from this day forward. I will make the best of my time. I will make the best of my life. I will make the best of my seasons. I will make the best of every moment in the name of Jesus. Please pray now. Please pray now. Please pray now. I receive, O oh Lord, wisdom, 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 wisdom for time and life management. Help me, Lord, to make the best use of my time, of my time and of my life, to the glory and honor of your holy name. Thank you, most high God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Can I hear your amen loud and clear? Can you help me turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is no time to waste time again. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shall we stretch our hands to our daddy as he has blessed us this morning?